Today I'm going to read chapter 6 of The Christian Archetype, Jungian Commentary on the Life of Christ by Edward F. Edinger. It begins with a quote from C.G. Jung, found in Mysterium Conjunctionis, Collected Works 14, paragraph 512. If the projected conflict is to be healed, it must return into the psyche of the individual, where it has its unconscious beginnings. He must celebrate a last supper with himself and eat his own flesh and drink his own blood, which means that he must recognize and accept the other in himself. Is this perhaps the meaning of Christ's teaching? that each must bear his own cross. For if you have to endure yourself, how will you be able to rend others also? This is the image that is at the beginning of the chapter. It's the Last Supper, the Hours of Catherine of Cleves. The biblical passage is, And as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it, and brake it, and gave it to the disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And he took the cup and gave thanks, and he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. Matthew 26, 26 and 27. Whoso eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood hath eternal life. John 6, 54. The image of the Last Supper has undergone enormous symbolic development because its reenactment became the central rite of the Christian church. Jung has written a major essay on this topic. It's entitled Transformation Symbolism in the Mass from Psychology and Religion, Collected Works 11. He observes, quote, Although the Mass itself is a unique phenomenon in the history of comparative religion, its symbolic content would be profoundly alien to man were it not rooted in the human psyche. But if it is so rooted, then we may expect to find similar patterns of symbolism, both in the earlier history of mankind and the world of pagan thought contemporary with it. The liturgy of the Mass contains allusions to the prefigurations in the Old Testament, and thus indirectly to ancient sacrificial symbolism in general. It is clear, then, that in Christ's sacrifice and the communion, one of the deepest chords in the human psyche is struck, human sacrifice and ritual anthropophagy. I must content myself with mentioning the ritual slaying of the king to promote the fertility of the land and the prosperity of his people, the renewal and revivification of the gods through human sacrifice, and the totem meal, the purpose of which was to reunite the participants with the life of their ancestors. These hints will suffice to show how the symbols of the Mass penetrate into the deepest layers of the psyche and its history. Unquote. The Last Supper is a particular example of the banquet archetype or sacred meal and thus belongs to the largest category of coagulatio symbolism. The first Last Supper was a Passover meal and thus assimilates Passover symbolism to itself. Christ replaces the Peshal lamb as the redeeming sacrificial victim. Exodus 12, 3 and following. The totem meal aspect of the Last Supper is illustrated by its parallel to the Dionysian rite of Omophagia, the Feast of Raw Flesh. Clement of Alexandria says, The Bacoi hold orgies in honor of a mad Dionysus. They celebrated divine madness by the eating of raw flesh, and the final accomplishment of their rite is the distribution of the flesh of butchered victims. Jane Harrison tells us an integral part of this terrible ritual was the tearing asunder of the slain beast, bull or goat, in order, no doubt, to get the flesh as raw as might be, for the blood is the life. 
this ritual reenacted the dismemberment and eating of the infant Dionysus by the Titans. There are striking parallels between the myths of Christ and Dionysus. Dionysus was the only god in the Greek pantheon to be born of a mortal woman, Semele. He rescued his mother from Hades and had her installed in heaven. In his first life, he was dismembered as an infant by the Titans and thus experienced a passion. In the Omophagia, Dionysus offers his worshippers his own flesh to eat as warrant of their immortality. The tragic drama is an outgrowth of the Dionysian mysteries and parallels the tragic view of life in this world as developed by Christianity. In the Omophagia, the sacrificed bull or goat represents Dionysus himself, who offers his devotees his own flesh to eat. Similarly, at the Last Supper and in the ritual of the Mass, Christ offers his body and blood for the spiritual nourishment of believers. In this context, Christ represents the Anthropos, the original whole man. To partake of his flesh means to partake of the eternal and transpersonal. As Jung says, quote, the mystery of the Eucharist transforms the soul of the empirical man, who is only a part of himself, into his totality, symbolically expressed by Christ. In this sense, therefore, we can speak of the Mass as the rite of the individuation process. Unquote. Just as Christ tells his disciples, Whoso eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood, Path eternal life, so participation in the homophagia renders the worshiper abacos, that is, invests him with the divine nature of Dionysus. The flesh of Christ, or Dionysus, is thus a sibis immortalis, food of immortality, which is also a synonym for the philosopher's stone. Psychologically, this means consciousness of the self, which allows one to see things under the aspect of eternity. In early iconography, the Last Supper was pictured as a fish meal. Christ himself was equated with a fish, ictus. This symbolism connects the Last Supper with the messianic banquet of Jewish legend, which is also a fish meal, one in which the flesh of Leviathan, the sea monster, will be served to the pious. Eating Leviathan is a clear reference to conscious assimilation of the primordial psyche. The same implication applies to the Last Supper as a fish meal. Fish represent unconscious contents of a cold-blooded, concupiscent nature. Like Leviathan, the great fish, they are smaller versions of the primordial psyche, which requires transformation by conscious realization. These considerations reveal the paradoxical nature of the Eucharist symbolism. On the one hand, the food provides a redeeming connection with the transpersonal self. On the other hand, it is the prima materia which must be transformed and humanized by the efforts of the ego. Paul was aware of the dual nature of the Eucharist when he wrote, Let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. 1 Corinthians 11, 28 and 29.